Let's snowmobile into Yellowstone. From Yellowstone's east entrance, I follow my guide Dean with Gary Fails Outfitting and Cody. This is our first stop. This will be Yellowstone Lake with the uh, Grand Tetons in the far. Next is our first wildlife sighting. One of the two of us is nervous about this part. With a hand signal, Dean tells me to pull up and stop. Then we watch. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. When this one stopped and looked right at me, I went into a nervous chatter. So let's name that one Fred and that one Barney. My heart is still racing. Onward we go around Yellowstone Lake. This is Steamboat Point. With 141 miles of shoreline, Yellowstone Lake is the largest high elevation lake in North America. Because of underwater geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, parts of it don't freeze. The hottest spot in the lake of 252 degrees Fahrenheit is here at Mary Bay. Looks like Dean has spotted something. It's a coyote on a several day old bison kill. Then in Pelican Valley, we stopped to watch this bison herd. This is one of the prime places in the park to see wildlife. In winter, the bison outnumber the people. So how many in that herd? 63 bison in that herd. Because <laughs> you counted each one? I counted each one. We go through this steamy spot and into the wide open spaces of Hayden Valley. I'm keeping an eye out because this is another great area to spot wildlife. Oh, look at that red fox. All right, we'll go up and look in the canyon. We stop to see Upper Falls, which are 109 feet tall, then stop to see Lower Falls at 308 feet tall. We get Grand Viewpoint all to ourselves. In any season, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone River is breathtaking, but especially in winter, without the crowds. Time to enjoy Yellowstone's season of snow and steam in the Norris Geyser Basin. In Emerald Spring, yellow sulfur combines with reflected blue light, making it look emerald green. This is Steamboat Geyser. It's the world's tallest active geyser. Go, go, go. Major eruptions can shoot water over 300 feet high. Come on. But Steamboat is super unpredictable. It goes off every four days to 50 years. The pre-show is fantastic. We pass another bison herd, and yes, I stop to watch. We make a quick stop at Chocolate Pot, then at Barrel Spring. It's one of the hottest thermal features in Yellowstone and named for its aquamarine color. After a look at Gibbon Falls, we see some swans, including a family of three. I didn't know Yellowstone has swans. At Lower Geyser Basin, we walk the boardwalk of Fountain Paint Pot Trail, passing bubbly mud pots and hot springs in this thermal area and watch a herd of bison in the distance. Then we come up on a lone coyote hunting for dinner in the snow. Keeping our distance, we watch. It's not having much luck and gives me a quick side eye as it passes by. Here we are walking up to Old Faithful and no crowds. There's hardly anyone here. This is the way to see Old Faithful. It's absolutely perfect. And there it goes. Only eight other people watched this eruption with us, and we even got treated to a rainbow. Oh, so cool. And it's done. We checked in for the night. Here's my room at Old Faithful Snow Lodge. Got a Western theme going and a great view outside off on a quick hike this morning after a fabulous dinner and a great night stay at Old Faithful Snow Lodge. You can go cross-country skiing or snowshoeing with rentals from the lodge. You can also head out to get one more look at Old Faithful and explore the Geyser Basin. We get back on our snow machines for a 70-mile ride out of the park. We do make a few stops, including Kepler Cascades and a windy and deserted West Thumb Geyser Basin. We stopped for a bit back at Pelican Valley to watch the bison herd. Oh, <laughs> it's fascinating to watch how they use their heads like plows as they forage for grass. So while we are close to the bison, we're actually up on a bridge. We're able to keep that safe distance from them. Our last stop is Lake Butte Overlook. It's cloudy and windy for us, but on a clear day, you can see the Tetons from here. We ride the last stretch and when we get to the leaving Yellowstone National Park sign, I'm not ready for this adventure to end.